Welcome to a new episode of Go. We are at St. Jerome Science Academy. As you can see, it is bustling in here. There are over 150 science experiments. There are over 70 judges, and it's all for one week of science fun. As we can see here, let's quickly take a look. Blocks, we have blocks. Let's quickly ask, first of all, what's your name? Alfred. Alfred, and tell me about your science experiment. My science experiment is like, of why do blocks fall because of gravity and the Earth is pulling it. That is a very good question. Why do blocks fall? I think we can all relate to him. So let's just quickly take a look over here. We have one that caught my eye, caution tape everywhere. I don't know why, but we're gonna find out. So quickly, we have Bentley here. Bentley, how are you doing today? Good. Yeah, you're good. Your project is really colorful and fun. Tell me what your project is. Well, the name of my project is what now is what liquid causes in the girl to the fastest. That's very interesting. What made you think of that? Because that you know that that takes some thought. Well, I didn't actually think of it. Oh, well, you know that's okay. So what were our findings? Let's just quickly take a look at what we have here. So I'll just get you on this side here and we'll show, we'll show the camera and everyone at home. We've got water, we've got hydrogen peroxide, we've got vinegar, coffee, lemon, and Coke. So if I had to guess, I would guess that Coke would maybe corrode it the fastest. What were your findings, scientifically speaking? Well, the cause to the nail that corrode the fastest was vinegar. And did you know that, or what was your guess going in? Oh, coffee. Hydrogen peroxide. Oh, a very good guess. I don't know why I would guess Coke, but it wasn't Coke, it was vinegar, so we both were proven wrong, weren't we? Yes. <laughs> all right, well, we got a lot of scientists here in the building, it looks like, and we're going to take a look at all these other projects, but first, he's got the swagger of Michael Buble, and Shaw TV's Jen McDonald introduces us to a local jazz musician. Take a look. So much to look at and so much knowledge in this one room at St. Jerome Science Academy. It is their annual science fair. We're having so much fun and if we just take a quick look down, we all wear them. Yes, socks and who would think they aid in health? Well, here's Shaw TV's Chloe Hopner from Red Deer. So much more to come on this episode of Go From Friction to rainbows, to rocket-powered cars from Soda and Mentos, which, by the way, I think is really awesome. I can't wait to see this later. You're not going to want to miss it, so stay tuned because you're watching Go right here on Shaw. Welcome back to the show. If you're just joining us, we're at St. Jerome Science Academy and down this hall we have bright young students with all their science projects. It is their 14th annual science fair. And uh, right now joining me is Samantha, your project caught my eye, first of all, very creative. And uh, if we just read the title here, it's What Cup Keeps Hot Water the Warmest? So Samantha, tell me your findings. The metal one keeps hot water the warmest, and the worst one is the parsley cup. That's why you got to use your own mug from home. So let's talk about where this idea came from. Um, it came from my mom, well, and me, because we decided, well, my mom said that the metal cup is obviously the warmest, so I decided to see which cup is actually the warmest. So let's pull it out and see how much warmer we're working with, roughly. So that's 40 degrees, it looks like, and the other ones are about 34, so wow. Coffee's looking quite a bit warmer. So, uh, mom, looks like mom was right. We're going to make Samantha say that. Mom was right. <laughs> I'm sure she's going to love that. All right, but yours is kind of twofold. We're also talking about not only which mug keeps it the warmest, but by having it be the, um, the steel mug, we're kind of reducing waste, correct? Yeah. You get a 10 cent discount at Starbucks and Tim Hortons and a 20 cent discount at Second Cup. So that's threefold. You get a deal, you have a warmer coffee, and we minimize waste. Yes. This is our future, folks. This is our future. It's very exciting. If we take a look down, I'm just going to quickly show you the next one beside me. It's Rebecca's project. I don't know where this came from because, to be honest, I don't even understand what the question is. But what effects do plate tectonics have if they were to move? We're going to have a lot of fun this show because of people like Rebecca and Samantha, and we're going to take a look at a ton more projects. But in the meantime, here's one community league in town that is doing extraordinary things. 
Bridges are a hot topic here, and as we see our little minions in the back explaining their bridge project, joining me right now, a teacher here at St. Jerome's, I have Shauna Stelmas Chuck. Tell me, this is the 14th annual science fair. Yes. When did this start? How did this start? Well, 14 years ago, we, just, we were a science academy, and we love science, and we said, let's have a science fair, even though it's not something that you usually see or definitely saw 14 years ago in an elementary school. It's something that's developed and evolved over 14 years, where our entire school, no matter if there are 100 voices students, our kindergartens, our grade ones, all the way up to grade six, have a project that they are going ahead, and they're celebrating, and they're sharing, and they're very excited to be here. I love it. You get the minds cultivated when you bring things like this in and there are about 70, I think, judges. Mm -hmm. Tell me how many judges and how it's evolved over the years because that's crazy. 70 yeah. judges is yeah. a great thing to see. It's exciting because we have judges here that have been with us since the beginning. A handful of them have been here since then. So they've seen it grow from 23 projects where students just went ahead and it, it participated if they wanted to, to now a full school participating. But our judges are representatives from throughout the city. From They have various backgrounds. They have uh, various involvement in science, but they're just excited to be here and celebrate with the kids. One thing that stood out to me, which I thought was very interesting, because, you know, sometimes when you come to these things, it's kind of obvious to pick out maybe which ones the parents helped a little bit more yeah. on. But these projects are done in the school. Exactly. Let's chat about that. That's great. Yeah. I think that that's a very important element of our Science Week, our science celebration, is that the students, it's very much student work. And we celebrate the work that the students are doing, and it's done here at the school. Right. So when you're walking around and you're, you're, you're viewing the projects, the kids can speak to them because it's authentically their own. Love it. Let's quickly talk about maybe a few that stand out because over the years it's crazy to see how it grows. We obviously get the volcano and mm -hmm. you get the Mentos and soda, yeah. but there are some ones that stand out that you think, wow, I mean, I wouldn't have even thought of that. Yeah. To pick just one, I couldn't even do it. But yeah. something else that's unique with our projects is that they're very much geared to the curriculum. So our grade one students, their projects are geared towards the grade one science curriculum and grade twos and, and everybody. So they're they're very much curriculum driven, but they're fantastic and it's their own ideas. They they pick their own areas of interest and we run with it. And just lastly, I mean, you know, there's a lot of focus on arts and stuff like that in mm -hmm. different schools. So it's very, uh, I think, important, you know, to have events like this. Why is it and what do you see that the students get out of this um, on a, an, an annual basis? Mm -hmm. At St. Jerome, we have an incredibly beautiful, diverse group of learners at our school. So no matter what those students' passions are, what their specific learning needs may be, no matter what, where they're coming to us from, this is a way for them to truly celebrate their passion, their love, and, and to do it and do it well. Like they're, they, So it's, it's unique that way for them. And we're getting them started young. We got, I've already met an architect. Yeah. You know, we've met you know, a variety of different ones. So mm -hmm. thank you so much, Shauna, for, well, for having us here. We really appreciate it. And we're going to take a quick break. You're watching Go On, Shaw. Welcome back to the show. I wish I could show you every individual science project because there are so many and they're so interesting. These kids are so bright. But this one here, I had to stop because I saw cookies. And we all love cookies, don't we? So the question here is why is salt necessary in cooking? And joining me right now, the creator is Paula. So Paula, tell me what you found. So I made two cookies, one with salt and one without salt. I tried them both and I had some other people sample mine. And what did you find in the end? Um, so the salt gives it more flavor, but some people think that oh, cookies without salt are a little better. Oh wow, do I get to try a cookie maybe? Sure. I just threw it out there, I'm down. Okay, which one's the one with salt? This is the one with salt. And that's the one that I want maybe? Uh, I don't know. All right, well, while I'm going to try this, because, by the way, they look delicious, and I'm very excited that I stopped here. Who doesn't love a cookie now and then? Take a look at episode four of Dinner by the Minute. We are still at St. Jerome Science Academy, and joining me, this is Jacob. You are in grade three, and we've got an interesting, colorful project here. Tell me what your project is. Um, it is what bridge design is the strongest? So we got a little architect here, I think, uh, in the making. Tell me why this is what you chose. Um, because my brothers are great with popsicle sticks and I like building. 
Hey, I like that. You always have to look to your backup and see what they're good at. Pull strengths from where you can. All right, what did we find? Because it looks like uh, if this is a bridge, it would be a little scary to drive on. Um, it actually broke after it held 33 cans. So which, uh, which bridge is this one? This one was supposed to be the suspension bridge, but now it's... Firewood. Pretty much. <laughs> All right, so you came up with three bridges. You did a suspension bridge, and what else did you do? I did the box girder bridge. A, I've never even heard of that. What, a, a box girder? Yeah. What does and that mean? It means it has, it's hollow inside, but still, the rest is, the outside is tough. Okay, so that one's looking really nice. That one's still in one piece, so that's exciting. I'm guessing maybe that's the one that won. What's this one I see here that also is looking a little bit scary? Truss bridge. A truss bridge. Okay, my goodness. Had you heard of these bridges before you made them? Um, yep. Oh, you're a little smart whip, aren't you? Yep. So what happened with, what happened with this one? Because this one's looking a little bit uh, destroyed as well. Um, the making wasn't too good, so it was a little crooked when crooked when we tested. So it only held 26 cans. So those 26 cans made it splunk. Splunk, no good. You don't want to go splunk when you're driving in a car on a bridge. That's kind of scary. Uh, yeah. So quickly, this one held the least amount of cans. Yep. And then then came the other suspension bridge, yep. and then I'm guessing. I can't even remember what it's called. What's this one called again? The box girder bridge. Let's lift that up. That's one that held the most? Yep. And what were our findings with that one? Um, how many it held? It held 36. 46. 46 full cans. That's impressive. So you're saying if you were to drive on one of these, you would trust the one in your hand the most? Yeah. And did you know that going into you or your project? Is that what you were thinking? What was your hypothesis? Um, the truss bridge, but since it, it's both, it was supposed to be the strongest, but the truss is kind of, the poor truss design wasn't, it wasn't built properly, so it collapsed. Well, it looks like you did a great job. It's, uh, it's very smart. So we can see you maybe one day building bridges in Edmonton? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Well, thank you so much for showing us your project, Jacob. Uh, we're going to take, take a look at your on-the-go calendar. I love science fairs, but I got to tell you, I debate why I come to these things when I find grade fives are smarter than me. So uh, right now, joining me, I have a grade five student, and her name is Rebecca. What's your project? And you're going to show us a hands-on experiment. Um, my project is about plate tectonics, and plate tectonics are the plates that are under the earth that they can move up and create a volcano, they can move up and create a mountain, or they can slide over top of each other and create an island. It's that easy, folks. So show us uh, your hands-on experiment. I'm really excited to see this, and I'll you can explain it. I'll be taking a continental plate, or an oceanic plate, okay. and a continental plate, and it will kind of be exciting because the continental plate can change the shape of the oceanic plate. If you push them together, the continental plate will move over top of the oceanic plate, and then the oceanic plate kind of changes the shape, kind of like the continental plate changes the shape of the oceanic plate and it can create different land, different land forms. It's as easy as that folks, just like that, just like Plato. That's what happens under our earth. Yes. So much fun. Well, yeah. thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Go. We've enjoyed having you and uh, I hope you've enjoyed seeing all of these interesting science experiments. From myself and Rebecca here, have a terrific day.